Greeks voted by 61% to defy Europe and reject austerity. They turned the Greek word for no, ochi, into a global message. Now they suspect they're about to be betrayed. After the euphoria of the no vote, whatever anybody thinks it means, the Greek Prime Minister spells out what it means to him. Tsipras begins to draft a new, final compromise. The whole economy is grinding to a halt around us. It's hard to watch, even harder to live through. We are translating the agreement to be published in Guy tomorrow. We received the call at 11 o'clock from the editors in chief. They split the text. We got the text. We are translating. It's top secret. They'll kill me. The offer is so close to what Europe wants that many Greeks will see it as surrender. They're going to be disappointed. You can't have the pie and the dog. I don't know how it's going to be. <laughs> You can't have your cake and eat it. Yes, really, you can't. What the fuck is the OCW? What were you hoping for, personally? For a good deal. If that's the best deal we can get, that's the best deal we can get. We tried. But 61% of Greeks voted to end austerity. Now, all they can do is sit and watch and wait. Syriza's members of parliament are meeting and a revolt against the deal is brewing. Ναι, 
Τώρα! Euclid Sakalotos, who's taken over as finance minister, tries to sell parliament a new compromise. But many of Syriza's lawmakers are just not buying it. 17 of them stage an open revolt. compromise, we can reach an agreement tonight if all parties want it. For 17 hours, the Greeks are bombarded with the same message. To stay inside the Euro, you must surrender control or your economy dies. This ultimatum causes outrage. Around the world, they take to Twitter. It starts in Barcelona, spreads to Athens, then to Paris, and then it goes viral. By the time the night is over, one billion people have seen the hashtag, this is a coup. Θα μιλήσω, παιδιά. <Ρι> Δώσαμε μια σκληρή μάχη έξι μήνες τώρα και μέχρι τέλους παλέψαμε προκειμένου να διεκδικήσουμε ό,τι καλύτερο μια συμφωνία που θα δώσει τη δυνατότητα να σταθεί η χώρα στα πόδια της και ο ελληνικός λαός να μπορέσει να συνεχίσει να αγωνίζεται. Βρεθήκαμε μπροστά σε δύσκολες αποφάσεις σε σκληρά διλήμματα, πήραμε την ευθύνη της απόφασης. together and united only when you're winning. You must be together and united when you're losing. Syriza managed to, to plant a small seed of doubt about the belief, the, the narrative that 
the, 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 the big forces, the European elites, are interested about Greece and they want to save it. They don't give a shit. I felt as if the earth had imploded from under my feet. I felt uh, incredible sadness and the sense of having betrayed the 62% of Greeks who, with astonishing courage, went out against the powers that be, against the, the media that were terrorizing them in their living rooms through their television and radio channels every day, uh, against the closed banks, against the ECB, against the Troika. I felt we would betray them and I don't think we had the historical right to do that. You should never, ever, ever, ever stop struggling. You should never, ever uh, believe that uh, the way out of austerity and the way out of attacks to democracy is uh, uh, behind the closed doors of the Eurogroup. The way out is in the society with the people. For Syriza's members, this second election victory is bitter. They've won on the promise to do the very thing they spent their lives opposing. Austerity. It's time for answers. How did the first government of the radical left in modern Europe fail so badly? What people in Greece will still want to know is, why didn't you just walk away? <laughs> if, I walk away, if I walked away this night, uh, I, probably I would become a hero for one night, maybe for two, three. But uh, it would be a truly disaster for the next days and nights, not only for me, but for the majority of the Greek people. So it was a very difficult dilemma. Eh? Uh, so my heart, my soul, said to me, go away. But my mind said to me that I had to find a solution, even though I knew that this solution was very, very difficult and tough. And let's be clear why, because a Grexit mm. would have involved the collapse of the economy. The collapse, first of all, of banks, and then the collapse of the economy. What would you do differently? I think that uh, we lost time. And uh, at the end, we were out of force and out of money. Uh, if we knew that, we could uh, make uh, more brave decisions at the beginning. Do you regret saying, that's it, no more Troika, no more Baylor, it's over? It wasn't over. Yeah, this is the fact. But it was not so easy to <laughs> to be over. I think that <clears throat> they did whatever they did to me, to, to us, to Greece. Not only because they didn't like us, but just because they didn't want it to have a domino effect in other European countries. I know that uh, the developments, the results, uh, the, the, the uh, whatever happened afterwards, uh, it was not uh, a good uh, development, but uh, the fact that these people had the right, had, 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 had uh, the chance to express their feelings and to feel dig dignity was something very, very important. This was historical times for Greece and for Greek people, and these times happened. Alexis Tsipras promised to end austerity, but he failed. Greece is still saddled with a debt it cannot pay, with an austerity program that cannot work. Greeks tried the barricades, 
Then they tried the ballot box. But for Europe, democracy didn't matter. Nobody knows what they will try next. <laughs> 